What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Over the last couple years here on the channel, we have shot tons of different stuff. Railroad ties, sandbags, cinder blocks, pretty much anything you can think of, we've shot at this point. But today we actually have one that's going to be a first for me. So here on the railroad tie, you can see we have three five gallon buckets filled to the top with solid concrete. Every one of these buckets is an entire 80 pound bag, I believe. So they're obviously extremely heavy and extremely dense. Now, when it comes to fortifying bunkers or setting up barriers, solid concrete would have to be up there on the list as uh, some of the hardest stuff to get through. So today I wanna shoot these with different calibers and see how far into solid concrete will a bullet actually go. Let's do it. So for those of you that have never shot cinder blocks or concrete, definitely don't do it too close because stuff will come back at you, which is why we're standing back quite a bit for this one. So first up, we have the nine millimeter and we're shooting it out of my brand new Canik TP9 SFX. It's like my new little race gun. This thing is sweet. So we've got four buckets total. We'll see what these bullets do and then switch them out as we need to. Nine millimeter. See, I got hit with shrapnel all the way back here. I got hit right in the chin. Obviously nothing big, but I definitely felt something. <laughs> So I have a little wire that we can use on some of the bigger calibers if we need to see how far in the bullet actually went. But for the nine millimeter here, you can see that it just probably went two inches into that concrete, made a decent little hole, but really barely scratched the surface. So after this, we'll probably step back a little bit further for the rifles and stuff. But next up, we have the 10 millimeter Glock 20, and we're actually gonna shoot the Underwood Extreme Penetrator out of this one. This is one of the hardest 10 millimeter bullets to stop. So this should be quite a bit more impressive than our nine millimeter. Let's see. Man, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. We're, I would say 15, 20 yards away maybe, and we're still getting showered with little pieces of concrete. That 10 millimeter is no joke. So I would love it if we could find some of these bullets, but I highly doubt we're gonna be able to. But you can see where our 10 millimeter hit, right there to the left of the nine millimeter. And it's definitely deeper, I would say probably an inch deeper than our nine millimeter, maybe two and a half, three inches tops into that concrete. So really not that big of a difference. You can see all the shrapnel from the concrete laying here on the railroad tie, but really not the big difference that I was expecting. All right, so this is about as far back as I can get on this range, and we're gonna move on from the pistols because obviously they're not doing too much. So next up, we have the AR-15 shooting the 5.56. We're actually gonna start with the 5.56 Tracer, and then we'll do a 5.56 Green Tip Steel Core Penetrator and see what the difference is. Yeah, that was our tracer. Let's try the green tip. Well, the green tip definitely broke off a lot more concrete. Let's see what the holes look like. And our 5.56 tracer is there on the right. You can see that those two basically just wiped out all the concrete off the top of this thing. You can see where the actual bullet went though. It is a little bit deeper than our nine millimeter and our 10 millimeter for sure. And then our green tip is actually much deeper and you can't see the bottom of that hole. So we're gonna grab our little wire measuring stick here and see. So the top of the concrete is right about there. And you can see that one probably went an inch and a half, two inches into that concrete. And I can actually see the bullet in there. I doubt you guys can. And there's part of it right there that I just dug out. You can see that's definitely a piece of our 5.56 green tip. So maybe two inches of penetration from a 5.56 green tip. That's not nearly as deep as I thought it would go. And it's not breaking apart like I thought it would. It's actually staying intact pretty well. All right, we got a fresh bucket of concrete up there. Next up, we're gonna shoot the 7.62 by 39 full metal jacket out of the AK-47, also known as the Choppa in the hip hop community. Let's see what it does. Man, even all the way back here, I'm getting a little concrete shrapnel flying by me. So I apologize for my sweaty 
face. For the first half of the video, I was trying to wipe it off, but it's just too hot out here. So here is where our 762 by 39 went in, and you can see, took a giant chunk out of the front of that concrete, and the hole looks pretty similar to our 556 green tip. You can actually see the bullet. Whoa, my camera's focusing right on it too. You can see that 762 by 39 at the bottom of that hole. Definitely still intact. Let's go ahead and grab our little measuring stick here. Again, the bullet is stuck in there. So, you know, add however much you think that is. But yeah, I would say that's probably an inch and a half from the surface of the concrete. So very similar to our 556 green tip. Interesting. Man, even the 762 by 39 is only going an inch or two into that concrete. All right, next up, we have the 308 out of my newest rifle, the Savage Axis 308. This is a caliber that I've been wanting for a really long time. So I'm excited to see what she does. Man, it's incredible what the power difference is from an AK to a 308. So much louder. Oh yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. So there is the impact from our 308 just to the right of the 762. So it looks like the 308 might have went a little bit deeper, but what's really obvious is the amount of destruction that it did around the bullet impact where the 762 and the other rifle calibers just kind of went straight in and made a little hole the 308 just literally blew out that entire area and penetrated as deep if not a little bit deeper so let's go ahead and grab our measuring stick this one's going to be kind of tough just because it blew out so much surface area but i would say about right there so that is actually a little bit deeper than the 762 or the 556 five, not by much but definitely a little bit deeper so out of our rifle calibers the 308 did penetrate the deepest and that is why i wanted that gun man it's videos like this where i really want a 50 bmg because it would be so awesome to just blow straight through one of those buckets with the 50 cal but i'm working on it all right we got another fresh bucket of concrete up there and next up we're gonna shoot the 12 gauge shotgun and if you watch the channel you probably saw this coming so this is a homemade 12 gauge exploding shotgun slug. It's filled with a binary explosive and then capped off with a 22 blank, which is a rimfire caliber. So when that 22 blank hits the target, it detonates causing the binary explosive to go off. I've still yet to find a cooler shotgun slug than these. These things are my favorite and they're super destructive. So they also kick like a mule. So I'm gonna try not to flinch. Oh my gosh. I really hope, almost knocked my camera over. I really hope that that impact was captured on the audio. That sounded like a major league baseball player cracking a home run off a wooden bat. It was that loud. That was one of the most incredible sounds that I've ever heard. And this is about what I expected from it, honestly. So you can see where it impacted that bucket of concrete. And there's actually burn marks all the way around that hole where that slug blew that concrete out of there. But the actual hole itself is not very deep at all. I mean, that's probably even shallower than our nine millimeter and the guns that we shot in the very beginning. So it smacked the crap out of it and even put some burn marks on that concrete, but did not penetrate nearly as far as the others. It's just not going fast enough and it's not designed to penetrate like the rifles are, but man, that was cool. <laughs> so although I'm not looking forward to cleaning up this mess, I'm gonna go ahead and do this for you guys because obviously one concern when using concrete or cinder blocks or something like that for a barrier is that over time, bullets will chew at it and eventually get through. So we're gonna use the chopper for this one. And I've got, I think, 19 rounds of 7.62 by 39 in here. It was a fresh box and I used one a little bit ago. So let's see if 19 rounds is enough to chew through this thing. That was interesting. Had a light primer strike. 
with an AK. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> and on the last round, it fell off our railroad tie. Let's go check it out. After the first couple shots, I couldn't see. I was literally trying to shoot through the cloud of smoke and dust. That's why I kept lifting my head up in between those shots. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we did not get all the way through. At least it doesn't look like it. But there is one pretty deep hole right there. You can see how far into that thing I am. Pull it out, I would say that's probably seven, maybe six or seven inches. So a little bit more than halfway through, but you can see on the bottom of it, there are no exit holes. And even 19 rounds of 762 by 39 was not enough to get through that thing, but man, it chewed it up pretty good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I would imagine that maybe two magazines from an AK-47 would probably be enough to get through that. But as you saw, an exploding shotgun slug and 19 rounds of 7.62 was only enough to get about halfway into that thing, which is pretty impressive, I got to say. So I'm dying of a heat stroke, if you guys can't tell. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up right here. I wish that I had calibers like a 50 BMG or a 338 Lapua, stuff like that, some bigger, more powerful rifles, but we're working on it. We will get those, and when we do, we'll revisit a lot of these experiments, and I'm looking forward to it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you liked it, as always, guys, please hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.